Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our Playwright TypeScript series. So a couple of things today we are going to talk about with respect to Playwright uh, Test Runner. Plus we will install a couple of uh, modules also. And then we are going to set up some configuration also in our project so that we will not face any kind of issue uh, further while writing the code. So first thing is that uh, when you open your source code or when you open your Visual Studio code, you will see that uh, one package.json file is here. So this package.json file is like a, is the heart of this entire project that we have created where we have to define the dependencies and then which version of Playwright that you are using it. This is just like pom.xml file. We use it with Selenium, Java, with Maven project. So same thing here that dev dependencies that we can write, we can write the script a configuration also, the name of the project, the version, the description, everything, author, license, those information, we can write it here. Right. So by default, when you install Playwright that we've already seen in the last video, so it will automatically download the latest version here. So let's see if the Playwright version is not available or tomorrow you want to update the new version, then in that case, you can always run the command and then you can just update the dependency here. So for example, let's see, uh, for time being, I'll remove this particular Playwright version. Assume that I don't have Playwright installed or I want to update the Playwright in this particular project. So in that case, we just need to execute the first command that is npm install Playwright hyphen hyphen save dev. Okay, so what we will do, we will just open our terminal. This is a terminal and then we are just going to uh, run this particular command and then press enter after that. So here you will see that Playwright uh, 1.41.0 is available. That's it. After that, what we need to have, we need to have one more module that is Playwright test module also so that we can write our test cases and everything. So let's run it again. Same command, Playwright test. I'll give you this, these command in the description of the video or maybe first comment of the video. You can just simple one by one, just install it. One thing, make sure that this Playwright version and the Playwright test version should be same. Tomorrow 1.42 is available. So you have to make sure that you are running the command for Playwright test also and the Playwright. Otherwise, it might give you error. Okay. After that, we have to, because this is a Playwright with the TypeScript, so we have to install TypeScript module also. So let's uh, define the dependency or download a dependency for the TypeScript as well. So oh, we are running it and now TypeScript 5.0. 3.3, that is what we are using it here. After that, we don't need uh, package.json. We can just simply close this here. Now, what we have to do here is that uh, we have to initialize the TypeScript in our project. Okay, so that also we have to do it. So I'll again, I'll open my terminal and uh, this is a TypeScript project so that we have to do one thing. Simple write npx TypeScript initialize the TypeScript in this particular project. So the moment I run this command, see this, what will happen? It will automatically create one TS config TypeScript related configuration. We can write in this particular JSON file. So just simple open this and here number of properties in the form of uh, key and value pair format you can do. So you don't need to change much here. What you just need to do, you just need to go to the target and in the target, we have to use language in the environment section. We have to use ES6 here, save it. And then make sure that the module should be common JS here and that's it. After that, you simply close this. Now, after this, what we have to do, after this, we have to add one more extension as well in the Visual Studio code. That extension name is called the Playwright Runner, or you can say Playwright Test Runner. This is actually developed by Microsoft. And uh, this is the extension available in the Visual Studio code. And Playwright is also coming from Microsoft. So Microsoft has created one dedicated test runner so that you can execute or debug your code and everything. And with the help of this particular test runner. So what we just need to do, we just need to go to the settings or manage section here, click on extensions here. And in the search, you just need to search for the Playwright. Okay. And you will see multiple options here. So you just need to check this one the Playwright test for the Visual Studio code. So simple click on it. And then after that, you can just simple see here, the rating is good. And this is officially developed by Microsoft.com. And you just need to simple click on install here. After that, within a second, it will be installed. 
and then if you want to restart your Visual Studio code, why do you restart it? After that, you just simply close it and then come back to your uh, click on it Explorer and then your package Explorer will be displayed here. Now, what we just need to do here is uh, open any script. So I'm not concentrating on the script right now. So let's say I'm already having one script here, which is a simple login uh, spec.ts that file that I have already created here under this particular my test folder. So make sure that we have to go to playwright config.ts and then the test directory also my test that I have written. It means in this particular directory, I have uh, my test file here. Let me open this particular test file. And now after running or after installing that runner, it will give you one option here. So now with this, with the help of that particular runner, we can directly execute the test cases from here. We don't need to execute the command from the terminal every time. This is just like we have a Eclipse or IntelliJ right click run as Java application. Same thing. We can do something from here as well with the help of this extension and you just simply click on it and that's it. See, click to run test and then I'm going to click on it. So here you can see that test got started here and then login test got started and uh, see it's opening the browser by default. It's a Firefox browser. So you can see that, I mean, Firefox browser, I've already written, not by default. And then I'm just simple going to this particular application. And then after that, entering the username, password, clicking on this uh, button here, and then uh, login button, checking the title, taking the screenshot, and then that's it. Okay. So what we have to do here is <clears throat> what is the major advantage? The advantage is that you can see the console output, that account login that we are printing here with the console.log. This will be displayed in the uh, console output. And you can see the runner information also that when exactly you executed this particular test. So it will maintain the history also here. And you can, if you really want to execute, you can execute from here. And then what you can do here is let's say I'm running it again today. I'm just going to run it again. So click on this once again. And now you can see that, uh, sorry, 11, 16, 35 that we executed. Now it's running again on exactly same time. And it's running here and you can see the result here. So this is like very handy. You don't need to execute the terminal and open the command again and again. But if you don't want to execute from here, you can directly execute from the terminal also. So which command we have to use that you simply go to the terminal here and uh, run this command. npx playwright test hyphen hyphen headed. Headed means I don't want to run my test cases in the headless mode. <clears throat> so simple run this and then you execute that. So here you can see that it's running in the headed mode and then done. After this, there is one more setting that you can apply that headless false. So headless false means from there also you can pass the headless false means I don't want to run my test cases in the headless mode. So in that case, if you run it again without hyphen hyphen headed also, it will be running in the normal mode, not in the headless mode. So you see that the browser is getting opened and then it will be running in the normal mode in the headed mode, right? So if I make it headless is equal to true, then in that case, it will start running in the headless mode. So see, I'm running it again. So you will see that it's start running in the headless mode. So I'm not getting the browser is not getting open, but still my test case got passed over here, <clears throat> right? Now I'll make it uh, once again to uh, false because I want to see the browser. Now, what you can do here is that you can just simply right click on this arrow, this section here, right? And just simply right click on it and uh, click on reveal end test explorer. So here you will see that here <clears throat> in the left hand side, the test explorer will be opened here like that. And then you can just do multiple things that we will see in the next chapter. But let's see if I really want to run it from here. And I really want to see the show trace viewer also. And uh, I just simply run it from here. See, I'm running it. So in that case, what will happen? See, the browser is getting open. And uh, okay, see the trace viewer also got opened and the browser is also got opened. And in the trace viewer, in the last chapter that we have already seen, right? That in the UI mode, it will capture all the events and then it will capture your uh, source code also. If any kind of console logs, you can check it here. The network calls, you can check it here. If any other logs or other, uh, you know, attachment or something like this, it will be displayed here. 
if you really want to check the source code, you can check the source code here as well. And then you can just, it will help you to check the network calls or any console in the UI mode. So that chapter we have already seen in the last chapter. So with the help of this test runner, you can just run the test with the trace viewer. Also, we can do it here. So if you don't want to use it, you can just simply uncheck it and then trace viewer will be closed automatically here. I'll do one thing. Let's see. Uh, I want to click on show browser and my, let's see, headless is, uh, I'm not passing it anything here. Just simple remove it. And then I say that please run my test cases with the show browser. So let's click on it and let's see, is it really showing the browser or not? So let's wait for a few seconds. Yes. So see browser is getting open. This is my Firefox nightly build browser. And then the test execution will be executed here and then done. Right. But you cannot select both show browser and the show trace viewer. Either of them, you can select it here. I think it's a bug or something, but uh, if you really want to check show trace viewer, make sure that, okay, you are passing uh, headless is equal to false here so that it will be running in the normal mode with the trace viewer here. So this is a very good feature. You can just check the debug also that debug feature. I'll tell you later in the next upcoming chapters. And then after that, you can just simply check and uh, you can check the logs. You can check the uh, history of your execution, everything. You can check it here. You can check the test results also here. There is one more thing. Let me just execute it once again. And uh, I don't want to see the show trace viewer and uh, let's uh, simple run it again. So the execution is done. Now you can see here that for all the asynchronous calls, it means wherever you have written this await keyword, this is called what? This is what the asynchronous call. And for every asynchronous step, it's actually giving me the milliseconds time also after the execution. It means it's saying around uh, 1103 millisecond, or you can say 1.1 second to execute or to open this particular browser URL or says to, uh, for this URL, 1.8 second is around, let's see for 1887 millisecond for opening the browser, something like this, or opening the page or Firefox launch. It's taking around 1680 millisecond or for entering the value is taking around 79 millisecond or something like this. So for each, and every await statement, it is actually giving me the timing also. So this is also really good to check the performance of the script or which particular step or which particular line of code uh, is taking time. So you can just monitor the time also from here. How to write the code, how to write the script. Those things are coming. Don't worry about that. First, we have to understand the different runners and everything so that we don't need to repeat these things again and again. It will be easily for easy for us to run the code or debug the code in upcoming chapters. Then we will focus only on the scripting part later on. Okay. So it's very simple. Just try this, download and install all these things, whatever I have mentioned here, whatever I have covered in this particular uh, session. And then after that, let me know in case of any issues. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all guys.